Hi, this is Julian for Production Expert with a list of five useful things in Pro Tools that you may or may not know. First off is about plugin organization. Now, you may or may not be aware that uh, when you go to select a plugin in Pro Tools, you get a list that can be separated up into uh, type or manufacturer. But if you go into the Pro Tools preferences, what you'll find is you can set a default EQ and a default dynamics plugin. And if you set those, they'll appear at the top of, we'll just set that one there for uh, now. And then uh, if you come in here, it'll appear up here before the flat list. And you can do that for one dynamics and one EQ plugin. Great. You can also do that, or a thing a bit like that, in the Audio Suite list. I still use Audio Suite processing loads, and this is a way of setting up favorites. It looks like this. In my case, I have the uh, Pro Limiter Loudness Analyzer for checking the loudness spec of bounces, and RX8 Deplosive for times when I might pop the mic. The way you do it is this. All you do is you come up here, and if you want to add one, you just hold Command when you select it. So if I wanted to add that same 340E, there it is, and if I come back on here, there it is, it's in this top list. If you want to remove it, then just command click on it and it's gone. Next up, here we are, we're in grid mode and if I get the grab tool, for example, and move this, it'll snap like you'd imagine it would do in grid mode. But if you want to temporarily go into slip so you can place something precisely without having to bother about toggling between edit modes like this, all you do is you just hold command and you can move it any way you want. If you then move it again, you're back in grid mode. But if I hold Command and move that to there, and then I change to relative grid, I can move stuff and maintain that offset from the grid. Next, if we go over to the mixer, then uh, what I see quite a lot is uh, I see if people want to do things like setup, sidechain compression, or parallel processing, or for any other reason they want the audio from a single track to go to more than one place, they very often use a send. And that's fine if you want to do something else with the audio in terms of its level or you know, automation or something like that. But if you just want what's happening at the fader to happen in two places, then you can do this. Let's say on this track here, if I click on here, then we've got all these places I can send that audio to. If I hold control while I'm doing that, then I can do exactly the same thing. But if I want it to go to line one and two as well, I can select multiple places and you get multiple ticks. And then if I come out of here, what you get is you get a little plus to tell you that that's happened. And you can even see where it's going to. You can do that for outputs or buses. So there's how you can mult an output, or you can do that to sends as well. Okay, next up, back to the edit window. The Melodyne editor down here is absolutely brilliant. Once you've tried ARA Melodyne, there's no going back. But one thing that's really useful is you've got yet another thing in this already very busy edit page in Pro Tools. And something that's really handy is to be able to, for a start, to toggle that on and off, which you can do holding Option or Alt on a PC and 8. But what I really like is if you add Control to that, so Option and Control, or Alt and Start on a PC and hit 8, you can toggle it between full height and your previously selected height. So you can quickly get it out, do what you're going to do, and put it away again. So that's toggling the MIDI editor to full height. Lastly, if you've got uh, in your session, you, you want to change an output. For example, with my, uh, with my Mbox Studio, for various reasons, quite often I want to change my main output between internal outputs 1 and 2 and internal outputs 3 and 4. So monitor left and right is my main output. And at the moment, I've got that set up going to, if we hover over there, Mbox Studio Internal 3 and 4. If I want to quickly change all of these outputs that are going to monitor left and right to go to uh, internal outputs 1 and 2, I could change them all from the mix window, but it's a bit laborious and I might miss one and all sorts of things can go wrong. Instead, if I go to Setup, I.O., and go to the bus page here, these are what are called mapped output buses, which means that that output is actually a bus, and then you can define which output that bus goes to. So here it's going to three and four. If I want to change that to one and two, just go to one and two. And there we are, it's done. And all of these that are routed to mon left and right are now going to outputs one and two instead of three and four. One click instead of a load of faffing about in the mix window. So there we are, there's five handy tips in Pro Tools that you may or may not have already known.